In this video, we're going to learn how to use a lighter with a Raspberry Pi. We're going to use a Python library to write code that will allow us to get data from the sensor. Once we're able to get distance measurements from the lighter, we're going to use additional Python libraries that will allow us to visualize the data in the browser. Specifically, we'll run a web server that will use WebSockets to send data back to a client. Finally, we'll learn how to use threads so that this process happens continuously and the data is updated in the client as fast as possible. This will allow us to get distance measurements to the objects around the sensor in real time. All right, let's do this. For this video, I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi 4, a micro SD card that we flash with the Raspbian operating system in a different video, the relatively inexpensive YD Lighter X4, it comes with a driver board and a USB cable for a power supply. I'll use a 5V micro USB power supply for that driver board, as well as a USB C power supply for the Raspberry Pi. And as usual, I'll use the official Raspberry Pi case. All these products can be found either through the links in the description of the video or by visiting directly my little Amazon shop. The assembly process is pretty straightforward. You're welcome to skip ahead in the video if you already know how to do this. With everything connected, as I've shown in other videos, I'll establish an SSH connection onto the Raspbian operating system running on the Raspberry Pi. As usual, I'll make a directory for the project that I'll name Lighter. There are a few options for communicating with the YD Lighter, but I'll use the simplest one I've found. I'll leave the link to it in the description of the video. It is available for installation through the pip python package manager. For initial testing, I'll create a file that I'll name Lighter Test. I'll go back to the repository of the library and simply copy paste one of the examples. As usual, I'll open a new tab with another SSH connection so that I can use it to run the Python scripts. Without much hassle, we should be able to run the simple example and get measurements from the sensor. After making sure that the hardware is working correctly, I'll move on to creating the Python script for our project. I'll name it lighter underscore viz. This file will run a web server using the Flask module to handle requests from clients via their web browser. So I'll include the Flask module, but I'll also include the Flask socket IO module in order to make those requests happen over WebSockets. I've covered WebSockets extensively in a couple of other videos and you can find the links in the description. As we've done in other videos, I'll create a Flask instance as well as a Socket.io instance for it. I'll create a top-level route where the exchange of data will occur. As usual, the server will send an HTML file to the client. The file itself I'll create in a templates directory and for now it'll just include some basic HTML elements. I'll then add the WebSocket events. The first one I'll arbitrarily name my event. For now, any data that it receives, it'll print it out to the terminal. I'll assume that the data is packaged under a key that is named data. As it's typical, I'll also handle the default WebSocket events, connect and disconnect. Whenever a WebSocket client is connected, I'll simply send a response back under the event RSP with a key value pair, status connected. When a client disconnects, I'll simply print out client disconnected to the terminal. 
The last thing I'll need for this configuration of a web server using WebSockets is calling the run method of the socket IO module. With that done, I'll go back to the HTML file that is sent to the client to include a little bit of JavaScript that will allow the client to establish a WebSocket connection with a server. I'll include the socket IO client side library and define a function that I'll name LV init to handle all the different WebSocket connections that we need. To make sure that my WebSockets are configured correctly, I'll open a new tab and run a test. So if I visit the IP address and the port where the web server is running, I should see the data that is sent from the client to the server printed out in the terminal. If we want to see on the client side the response from the server, we need to add a WebSocket handler for the RSP event. Once we do that, if we rerun the server file and refresh the page, we can see the response. Now that we have the WebSocket working, we can worry about exchanging the LiDAR data. We'll first need to configure the LiDAR interface as we did in the example code. Then I'll just define a function that I'll name getData in charge of retrieving the data from the sensor. I'll use a global variable that I'll name underscore data for storing those measurements. For a quick test, I'll call this function from within the handler of a client request. So now we can expect that whenever a client sends a request to the top root path of the server, the data will be printed in the terminal. If that happens correctly, it is time to run that get function continuously in the background so that we can have the latest measurements ready for whenever the client needs it. To do this, we'll use the threading module that is built in to Python. So that the standard library can play nicely, we'll also need to import the gevent monkey module. I'll create a global thread object, which I will initialize when the first request to the server is made by a client. The thread will run a function that I'll name background get data. In this background get data function, I'll simply update our global data variable. Once it's updated, I can call the emit method of the socket IO module to send it back to the client. I can now go back to the HTML file that is sent to the client and handle this event to receive the data. For now, I'll simply log it to the console. So if I rerun the server file and refresh the page on the client, I should be able to see the lighter data coming in through the console. As I'm also interested in seeing how fast we can run this, I'll measure the while time of executing this function and send it back to the client. Now that we have the data going to the client, it's time to visualize it using a chart. I'll use the D3.js library to do so. I'll create a couple of HTML objects to display the data that is being sent from the server, configure the D3 plot using JavaScript, and format the data in a way that's compatible with plotting it using the Plotly library. I'll make sure that a new plot is redrawn every time I receive new data. Lastly, I'll update the time HTML element to visualize how long it took to get that piece of data. If this goes correctly and I can see the chart, I'm ready to do it in a continuous fashion. So if I go back to the server Python script, I can do the measurement inside of a while loop. Now when I run the Python web server script and go back to the client, refresh the page, I should see the data being updated automatically at a given rate. The fastest I'm getting is one read every 1.6 seconds. As I have very little overhead in getting the data from the sensor, I should be getting measurements at a faster rate. So I will need to dig in to the PyLiDAR data and see what the bottleneck is. Nonetheless, we've learned how to get data from a LiDAR sensor 
and run a Flask web server using WebSockets to visualize it in JavaScript using the Plotly JavaScript data visualization library in combination with WebSockets so that the data exchange happens in real time. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two. That really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos, and I will see you next time.